buckled up for today and tapping into your inner fan. Because we're going to be talking about a couple of little conjunctions. But wait, who am I? Ha! My name is Mr. Goody Grammar, and I'm here to provide you with all your English grammar needs. Let's get it started! But before we begin, make sure to download the free guided notes in the description box below. The notes and the episode have matching badges that help you follow along with each section. Also, underline any maroon text that appears in the episode to identify key concepts and key terms. It's the shopping list your mom always forgot to take to the grocery store. <laughs> but hold up! Before we get started, I think we should jump into a... Basket breaker! Ah. Uh. Uh. Uh -oh. The basket breaker question is, what are you a huge fan of? What makes you go, whoa, I love it! <laughs> you get? I'm excited to know a little bit more about you. I'll go ahead and give you my answer. A thing that I am a huge fan of is horror movies. Yeah! <laughs> Do you hear that? There's something. Is that a clown? You weren't just chased by a killer clown. Oh. So, I need to go ahead and rehydrate myself with some radioactive waste. <laughs> go, 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 go. Three, two, one. As stated, today we're talking all about fanboy. And no, not just the ones that you see at comic book conventions. I'm talking about conjunctions. And this specific type of conjunction. The coordinating conjunction. Let's dive in. First, let's go ahead and review something. What? Well, I want to go ahead and briefly recap what a conjunction is. A conjunction is a word that joins together, connects words, phrases, and clauses. A conjunction is a glue of the sentence. It's putting those things together. Whoa! More specifically, we're going to be focusing on coordinating conjunctions. But what are those? Well, Coordinating conjunctions are conjunctions that join two equal parts. And we remember them through the acronym FANBOYS. Because let's be honest, coordinating conjunctions sounds a little too intense and technical. So let's go ahead and use FANBOYS to refer to coordinating conjunctions. And if we were to go ahead and break this acronym down, let's go ahead and see what each letter represents. F stands for for. A stands for and. N stands for nor. B stands for but. O stands for or. Huh. Y stands for yet, and S stands for so. Again, fanboy stands for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. And we're going to go ahead and break that down a little bit more. 
Come with me. Let's go ahead and start by looking at the first conjunction of the acronym FANBOYS. FOUR. What does FOUR mean? Well, FOUR is a conjunction that can basically be defined or synonymous with the word BECAUSE. It's giving a rationale, a reason. Let's go ahead and look at an example of how FOUR is used in a sentence. Example. I am so tired for I stayed up all night to study for the math test. <laughs> Help me! I can't feel my face. I'm so tired. I just want to... Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and jump into our second conjunction. It's the word and, and we use it all the time. I just did. <laughs> and can be defined as together with or as well. It's adding on. Here's and used in a sentence. The donkey and the squirrel took a trip around the world. Whoa, whoa, you two do you see all this stuff? Oh, landmarks, oh, snow cones, everything. As you can see in this example, the word and is used to join together the donkey and the squirrel to show that there are two subjects, or animals in this case, going on an adventure. So the word and is used to connect. Now, to the third conjunction of fanboys. I'm talking all about the conjunction nor. Nor can be defined as not at all. Absolutely not. And we usually use nor to negate something. Let's go ahead and see how it is used in a sentence. Neither my cat nor my puppet enjoys ice cream. What's wrong with them? As you can see in this example, I'm using neither and nor together in order to negate the idea that my cat and my puppet enjoy ice cream. Mm, nope. So nor is used to negate. Neither my cat nor my puppet enjoys ice cream. Kind of think of it as the opposite of the word or, because we're negating. Keep in mind, neither and nor are usually connected together, and they're called correlative conjunctions. However, nor by itself can be considered a coordinating conjunction. It is a fan voice. Now, to the Fourth conjunction of fanboys. What is it? It's a conjunction, but. But can be defined as in contrast or however. It's, again, going against whatever idea came before it. Here, let's go ahead and look how but is used in an example. Example. Margaret does not like Italian food, but she ate an entire plate of pasta. What? Margaret, I thought you said you hated Italian food. What are you... You ate that whole bowl? And all the breadsticks? None for me? I just want to run the only. As you can see in this example, I used the word but to contradict the first thought. I said that Margaret does not like Italian food. But then I go against it by saying, but she ate a whole plate of pasta, which is Italian food in this case. So 
It's going against it, saying, well, she doesn't like it, but she ate this whole plate. Huh, crazy, right? Moving on, <laughs> let's go to the fifth conjunction of fanboys. That's right, I'm talking about the conjunction or. Or can be defined as another alternative is. Basically, or allows the writer or speaker to provide options. Let's take a look. Example. I could go to the music festival or I could do my homework. Hmm. But which one should I do? Huh. Yeah! so much better than Giamma. gonna fail that test. Oh. As you can see in this example, or helps create two options. I can either go to the music festival or I could do my homework. Two options. And that's what or does. And whoa! Grammar goodies. Don't get burnt out on me just yet because we're moving to the sixth conjunction of fanboys. I'm talking about the conjunction yet. Many people get confused with how to use yet, but I'll break it down for you. Yet can be described as in contrast, which is very similar to the conjunction, but let's look at this. Example. I could go to the music festival, yet I must do my homework. Oh. Oh, oh, I have to write this essay and there's no Wi-Fi. Ah! Does anybody have a hot spot? No? I should have just gone to the music festival. In this example, I'm saying that, yeah, I could go to the music festival, yet I have something else that I must accomplish. So it's contrasting from the idea of going to the music festival by saying, yeah, you gotta do this. And finally, ladies, gentlemen, puppets, and everybody else, woo, I have the seventh and final conjunction of fanboys. <laughs> That's right, I have the word so. So can be defined as for this reason. It's helping build off of the first thought. Let me show you. Example, Henry wants to be an astronaut, so he must pay close attention to mathematical formulas. Henry, you have to use E equals MC squared to, woo, fly off into space. I don't think that's accurate. I'm not a scientist. Woo. As one can see in this example, it starts with the idea that Henry wants to be an astronaut. And then it's built off of that with the word so, or for this reason as the other definition. For this reason, he needs to pay close attention to the mathematical formulas. Keeping that example in mind, I want to go ahead and throw something your way. When it comes to fanboys, you can actually use a comma and a fanboys to connect two independent clauses together, two complete thoughts to form a compound sentence. For example, we had, Henry wants to be an astronaut. Independent clause, comma, so. He must pay close attention to mathematical formulas. He must pay close attention to mathematical formulas. That's our second independent clause. We just use a comma and so to join them together. It's a great function. 
However, if you are going to use this type of sentence structure, you need to make sure that you do use the comma right before the fanboys to connect them together. Or else it doesn't work. In the end, as you can see, fanboys join together two or more equal parts. They're the connectors, the glue. Ooh, that was some delicious radioactive waste. I drank up all seven fanboys. But now I think it's time we ask for some employee assistance. We need some employee assistance. For this section, Here's what I want you to do. Read each sentence and determine if it uses the correct fanboys. If not, make sure to replace the fanboy with the correct one. If you need help doing this, look back at the different definitions given for each of the conjunctions, for each of the fanboys. That will give you insight into which fanboys best fit the sentence based off of its meaning. What's going on in the sentence? Is it contrasting? Is it building off of it? Is it giving options? That's for you to find out. Again, read each sentence carefully and determine if the fanboy already in the sentence is the correct fanboy based off of the information provided in the sentence, the meaning that is needed to connect things together. Let's get into it. Example, he accumulated glorious victories in the Colosseum, for he was strong and fearless. Oh yeah, lion, you wanna talk that? Okay, muscles of steel. Let's go! Ah! <laughs> All a part of a hard day's work. <laughs> Victory. What'd you get? Is four correct? Huh? Ding, ding, ding! Absolutely. It totally is. How was that? Well, if you think about it, the first independent clause says, oh, he got all of these wins. And it's followed up by the reason behind it, that he is oh, strong and fearless. So this is the correct fanboys to use in this sentence. Example. I rarely partake in interdimensional travel, but my platypus encouraged me to do it. Oh, platypus, what dimension are we about to go into? Oh, did you find this trip on Expedia? Okay, here we go. Oh, where are we? You promised me? That there would be a beach? <laughs> oh. Worst trip ever. Is but the correct conjunction to use in the sentence? Think about it. What did you get? Is but correct? Absolutely. The first independent clause states that I rarely, rarely partake in interdimensional travel. I don't do it. In contrast, my platypus encouraged me to do it. So, in contrast, woo, my platypus is pushing me to go on said trips. So, this is absolutely correct. Example. Dolphins love to destroy cities, for make people quake in fear. No! <laughs> They're burning down the city with their laser beams. <laughs> They're way too advanced. Ah! 
Is four the correct fan voice to use in this sentence? <laughs> Is four the right fan voice to use here? Absolutely not. Dolphins love to destroy cities for make people quake in fear? Mm, that sounds so wrong. So, we're going to use the fan voice and. Look at this. Dolphins love to destroy cities and make people quake in fear. Right here, we're using the fanboys and to show that dolphins love to do these two things. They love to destroy cities and make people quake in fear. So the correct answer here is and. Woo! I don't know about you, grammar goodies. That was a lot of information, tons of practice. I feel like I'm surrounded by fanboys. I'm back at the comic convention. Oh, So let's go ahead and put all this knowledge to the test and do an aisle check. Let's go. For this week's aisle check, here's what you're going to do. Go ahead and create two, count them, two original sentences that use fanboys in them. The content and the structure of the sentences are completely up to you. However, just make sure that you incorporate the fanboys into the sentences. It's practice. <laughs> While you're doing that, let's go ahead and start checking out. Woo! Grammar goodies. I know you already know this, but I am such a big fanboy of you. Why? Well, you come into general grammar and do all your practice. Because guess what? If you don't get the concept at first, just remember that learning new concepts takes time and practice. And I'm here to help you every step of the way. And if your sentences make us <laughs> laugh and they use those fanboys correctly, I'll go ahead and give you a shout out in an upcoming episode. Well, that's all the time we have for today, Grammar Goodies. As always, my name is Mr. Goody Grammar. Thank you so much for dropping by General Grammar. And come in anytime. I'll see ya.